or the system however you want. We also built into the Web API some other cool features. So anyone here using OData? How many people have heard of OData? Cool. Uh, how many people go, hey, I should use OData, but I've never had time to do it? Yeah, a few people. A few brave people. There's more of you out there, but you're cowards. Uh, no. um, so let's say we want to use OData here. Well, I could go ahead and just say top two, which is the way in OData you express I want the top two, two results back. And I'm going to say skip two. So I want to skip into the sequence by two. And then I could say I want um, order by ID. And if I go ahead and run that now and click on it, you can see we only return two results. There are two results into the sequence ordered by the ID. Uh, and I didn't have to do anything. Basically, as long as my web API supports iQueryable, um, we can actually do an efficient database query. So I'm not actually returning all the products to my web server. I'm only requesting the two products from the database that I need. And then the web API is automatically serializing it in JSON and sending it back. And if I want to, um, again, I could go back here and I could just change to accept application slash XML. And now, here it is in OData form uh, as XML. So a really easy way. I can start to compose things in a really clean way, use any type of format, use OData, uh, and um, get kind of a really nice, clean programming model for doing that under the wire. And if I want to, I could then go ahead and say, uh, let's actually return not the sequence, but let's return the specific second object. Again, in XML form. Oops. That's what it looks like. Uh, if I want to return it in JSON, I can either specify JSON or just because it's the default, hit that URI, and there it is in JSON. So really easy, clean way. I can expose any REST API. I can expose any data or any behavior I want, uh, and I can use any format and integrate it within ASP.NET. Other things I could do. So we're retrieving data. Let's actually update data. So uh, I'm going to use, um, again, you can use any format you want in order to express uh, your API. I'm going to use REST. Uh, typically with REST, you say, uh, I could post two API products to indicate I want to add a new uh, product into that list. And then I'm going to return back the product that was created. And I'm going to say uh, post. Uh, and I'll say product P, like so. Uh, and then I'm just going to say db.products.addp, db.savechanges and then return the product. So pretty simple uh, little method here. Uh, one of the things you'll notice is I'm taking in a product object as an argument. You might ask, oh, how does that work? Uh, well, let's take a look. So what I can do here is because I'm taking, uh, expecting a product in, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I'm going to actually post to this URL, the product's URL, and I'm going to include in the payload body some JSON. And so I'm going to say name is, what do you want to name the product? Rocks. Um, what is it, price or unit price? I forget. What do we name it? Is it price? So we have a price. OK. Um, and so we'll name this price. It's priceless, but for the purposes of this, we'll say it's $3.40. Um, and so that's, that's going to be a JSON payload. And uh, just to indicate that we're sending JSON, I'm going to say content type. And we'll say application, oops, like so. Hit execute. And what you'll see here is we just posted this JSON format. ASP.NET NBC automatically pulled apart the format, created a product object, passed it into my API. We saved it in the database, returned it. Uh, and if I go now in the browser and hit products, uh, I should have that added into my database. So you can see here, pretty easy way I was able to expose a REST API and call it. Now, if you're uh, a Web API guy or a REST guy, though, you'll say, well, Let's look closely at what exactly did you do back and forth in terms of posting things. And uh, if you look closely right now, we're not quite there yet in terms of what we want. Because if you actually look at the response that came back, uh, we sent back the, um, the object that was created. And so we can see our new ID here. 
But if you look at, uh, for example, the result HTTP status code that was sent back, we sent back a 200, which in HTTP worlds means success. Uh, but we really kind of want to be a little bit more specific in terms of the type of success. We succeeded, but we also created something. Ideally, I also would like to, in a REST world, let the user know what is the URI to the thing to retrieve data on the thing we just created. Uh, and often you use a location header uh, in, in HTTP in order to express that. And so let's go back to our method here and make it a little bit more uh, REST and, and Web API friendly and allow us to specify custom HTTP status code and custom HTTP header. The way we can do that um, is really easy. I can just say HTTP response message of type product. And this allows me to return not only a product that Web API will automatically serialize into the appropriate format, but it also then allows me to set some additional HTTP specific knowledge around it that will be applied as well. And so then I can just say var result is equal to new HTTP response message of type product of P. I can then say HTTP status code dot created to kind of indicate that I want to return back an HTTP 201 status code, uh, which meant that I created something as part of this request. And I can say uh, headers.location. I'm going to send back a pointer to the Web API that will actually return back the information about the thing that was created. And so I'm going to say request URI, and then I'm just going to append on to it API slash products. Uh, and then I'll just say uh, oops, p.id dot to string, like so. And then I can just return back the result. So basically, just modified that command a little bit. The, the API signature and calling it didn't change. Uh, but now, if we go back and say, uh, compose another thing, and we'll say uh, Netherlands rocks, uh, and that's worth a lot more. Um, uh, and hit return, and then you'll see here, I now get a 201 back from the server, and if I actually look in my uh, location header, I now have a URI that allows me to pull back the details about the object that was created. Uh, and in fact, if I go ahead and copy that, and go and say product slash six, and do a standard get here, um, Like so, oh, let me get rid of that. Uh, and do a request. You can see here, I just did follow that link, and I got back data about the individual record I just created. So, anyway, uh, the net take of it is, if you want to expose a web API, it's not really easy to do it. You can use any format, and you can fully embrace HTTP, um, and you can be kind of as down and dirty in the HTTP as you want. Um, but at the same time, higher level things like formatting, security, and things like that are taken above. We will provide OAuth integration as part of this. So if you want to use OAuth tokens to secure things, you can. Uh, you can use the standard HTTP, uh, ASP.NET um, uh, things as well. So for example, if you want to authorize access, uh, you can use the authorize attribute. So it's, it's basically consistent with the rest of the ASP.NET MVC that you know. Uh, but it hopefully provides a base class that makes it really simple and really clean uh, in order to actually uh, publish and expose web APIs. So, you might say, but how many times does a random guy in a red shirt use Fiddler to hit my site? And is this really worth doing all this work with web APIs? Am I going to get the value from that one person? Well, the good news about web APIs, again, is anyone can call them. So you could build an iOS app, you could build an Android app, you could build a, a Metro app in Windows 8. Uh, they all have APIs for calling web APIs, uh, and that way you can kind of build one kind of uh, uh, layer that exposes your data or some of your logic of your site, and then basically you could build a rich client experience across any type of devices calling it. You can also, importantly, call this from JavaScript, and this web API uh, infrastructure provides a really clean way that you can integrate with things like jQuery, Knockout, uh, back, Backplane, or any other uh, Backbone or any other framework you want. Uh, in order to build kind of a rich uh, browser experience uh, using HTML and AJAX. So let's take a look at some of that. Um, so we're going to open another project, just in the interest of time. And so... And 
And this project is, in fact, so simple, it doesn't even use any server-side code. It just actually has static HTML. Um, and if I run this, it shows a few simple examples of how you can call things from JavaScript. And so I have a simple get that's going to return back a bunch of comments um, from people on the team. Uh, basically, to call this from jQuery, you just do dollar sign dot get, pass in a URL, and then just process it in your callback function. Uh, if you want to implement uh, things like, um, uh, let's see, things like uh, CRUD operations, where I want to delete things, where I want to post new things, uh, again, it's very clean to do that. Uh, I could just do the dollar sign Ajax and use uh, things like JSON.Stringify and standard jQuery to retrieve variables from my HTML page. I can then just go ahead and post to a, uh, a web API in, in um, uh, web API using the standard jQuery mechanism to do it. And then I can just have return types based on the status code that comes back to determine what I should do responsively on the client, depending on whether things succeeded or failed or things like that. So really easy. Just use standard jQuery. It doesn't require a custom JavaScript library in order to use these web APIs. Uh, and we think, and we've been trying to make sure the defaults are really good so that if you want to build a rich client JavaScript experience inside the browser, or you want to build um, uh, an app with WPF, Silverlight, iOS, Android, Metro, whatever you want, uh, provides a really clean way to do it. And the best, of, the best thing is you can build that web API layer once and call it for many of those different types of experiences. Other things we've done as part of the web API uh, is worked on uh, cleaning up the testing story, uh, making it really easy to unit test um, these types of things. How many people here do unit testing? How many people here have it, ri hate writing custom fakes and mocks? Yeah, it kind of takes the fun out of testing. Um, uh, we try to make it really simple with web API so that you don't have to write fakes and mocks in order to actually test your APIs anymore. Uh, and so basically, all your dependencies can now be supplied by simple constructor parameters. Um, and you don't actually need to ever simulate a method call um, as on any of these objects. Uh, and at runtime, uh, Web API integrates with a standard ASP.NET dependency resolver. So you can plug in whatever dependency injection framework or IOC container you want to use uh, in order to resolve references at runtime. And so, for example, uh, if you want to look at that. We can do so. So I have a simple controller here. I have two methods on it, uh, a get and a post. The post and the get pretty much look just like what we did earlier. Um, they're going into repository. To test this, I can write some pretty simple unit tests. Uh, my test project, I basically uh, just pass in a repository to my controller. And I can just call the method and then basically assert the result. And then if I want to verify that a 201 HTTP status code was returned, uh, I can basically just create a product, post to it, and you can see here I can just assert that the status code that was returned was correct. And I can directly go ahead against the headers in order to assert that the appropriate headers were returned as well. And then I can just say, run the tests um, and make sure that the output is correct. Um, and again, I don't have to fake or mock anything in order to do it. Um, it all is just sort of uh, works very cleanly. Um, and again, I can go ahead then and have my repository passed at runtime using whatever dependency injection framework I want. So testing is really easy as part of it. Other thing that we've done is uh, we've heard from some people that say, hey, I love that you're integrating Web API inside ASP.NET, but what if I just want to have a command line console that exposes some functionality programmatically as well, and I don't want to run a web server. I just want to expose a few little things. So one of the things that's cool about this particular feature of uh, ASP.NET is that you can host it not only within a full-blown ASP.NET app, but you can also host it within any other type of app as well. So you can, in fact, host this inside a WPF app if you, if you wanted to, um, or inside a console app or a Windows service. Uh, it's the same programming model, but you even have more flexibility in terms of how you deploy it and how you run it. Uh, and for Azure, for example, you could run this inside a worker role. So let's see what an example of that looks like. I have a hello controller. It's uh, super simple. Just returns a product or a set of products. So again, same programming model you saw earlier. In this case here, though, I'm running in a command line console project. Um, and all this thing does is basically specify a basic